Hey everyone, Tony George, DocSports.com. It is a Tuesday update, and we're going to be talking NBA Eastern Conference Finals. Um, I'm taking a full pass in this game today. Side and total. So I'm going to give you just some things to consider, different ways to bet it. Um, I'm probably going to do these things on a very small level, you know, financially. So um, I thought I'd share my thoughts with you here. We're more concentrated on baseball today. We've got a huge card. We'll tell you about everything that's going on the website in a minute uh, in basis because we're on a solid run there. And uh, I want to bring your attention to that. But let's get turn our attention here. Now, Boston's at home. They're laying 10. The total's 221 and a half. And my biggest fear with Boston, as I've shared with you all year long, is their coaching. Um, in both game twos at home, in both of their opening series against Miami and Cleveland, they look like a, a rear-end clown uh, out of nowhere. They have the best, when Porzingis is healthy, uh, they have the best roster in the NBA and the best team. Uh, the problem is, is their coaching leaves a lot to be desired. Um, sometimes the motivation of the players wane. Um, and we're talking about a big number here. Now, Indiana is off a grueling seven-game series against New York. Uh, and New York, bear in mind, was Jalen Brunson and then a bunch of other guys. You know, with Anubli and, and Randall out. Um, they're not the quality of team, man for man, across the board and three or four deep on the bench that Boston is, and that's going to play into this series. If Boston shows up. Now, in the first two series, Boston opened up uh, with a 20-point win against Miami and a 13-point win against Cleveland. And we have a well-rested team here. Are they dialed in? Are they focused? What's the coaching been? What's the scouting been on Indiana? Kind of had their way with them in the regular season. And then we have the fact that 10 out of the last 11 home games that Boston has won have been by 10 points or more. So that all plays into it. And the entire universe is on Boston and the over in this game. That's scary. And then you add in the fact that Indiana has played had to play three more postseason games so far than what Boston has. So then you have a fatigue factor. Then you have back-to-back -back roadies. All that played in, Boston looks extremely attractive. But I will tell you, just like Dallas playing Minnesota starting tomorrow night, Nobody, and I mean nobody, is here by accident. You know, Indiana can go off at any point in time. You know, Halliburton can have six points in one game and 34 the next. There's a lot more inconsistency on Indiana's part than what there is Boss's part, who's a huge favorite in this series. Now, if you take a look, at the first half line at minus six. Boston is number one in the NBA in first half scoring. Boston is number one in the first quarter and number one in the second quarter. And something I would share with you on the defensive side of the ball. Indiana is ranked 27th overall in the NBA. They're 28th in first quarter scoring defense and 30th in second scoring second quarter scoring defense Boston is a lot stronger in the first half than they are in the second half considering third quarter scoring they're ranked 13th and uh fourth quarter scoring they're ranked 18th you know so they're a strong first half team you think they would come out I'd probably lean small You'd want to lean small in the first half numbers based on these statistics. And I don't think they've played a team in the postseason that is a prolific scoring team like what Boston can be. They haven't 
had to experience that. And well-rested, dialed in, just based on those numbers, six is a reasonable number. However, you worry about the fatigue factor, and is it more prudent to lay the 10 with a rested team at home that could get on a big roll here where Boston tosses it in late just through sheer attrition and fatigue? So that's the dilemma in those two numbers, honestly. I think the more prudent play here is doing a team total on the prop market. And prop markets are the way to bet these games. We'll talk about that in a minute. It really is. There's been a guessing game. It's back and forth. It's, the playoffs have been uh, somewhat unpredictable. Um, you see a Jekyll and Hyde. You, you win by 35. You lose by 40. The net, I mean, it's it's insane the way these things have gone down, which is why I'm backing off. Because I have not had a good postseason. I had a solid regular season and a lot of big play hits, but the postseason has not been good to me. And I'm not happy about it. I'm going to be real particular, really dialed in for premium plays through these conference finals and into the finals. I'm going to cherry pick spots where I think you have the best chance of winning where teams, the numbers are going to stay consistent. Uh, but the team total on Boston over 115 and a half, I think that's the best pick in this game. That's the one I'm betting. I'd lean first half minus six, but Boston team total over 15 and a half. I think they get there. Well rested at home. Uh, undoubtedly, the best offense left standing in the postseason. Uh, one of the best offenses in the NBA, if not the best, almost the entire season. Um, I think they can put up 120 tonight. I'm not sure what Indiana can put up based on fatigue. Um, that series against New York was extremely physical. Um, it really was. And that, that takes its toll. You know, this is a relatively quick turnaround, you know, which is a huge advantage for Boston. They can come, if they come out of the gate hot, they could be up easily double digits at halftime. You wonder about the waning moments in the fourth quarter and who's in and who's out and what's going on. There's just a lot more intangibles involved full game. Can they beat them by 22 tonight? Yeah. Could they beat them by six? The chances of them beating them, by more than the spread are higher than them not beating them by 10, if you get my drift. But team total over 115 and a half, I'd take Boston. I think they light it up tonight, I really do. Over at the website, uh, Major League Baseball, since May 4th, a $100 player is up $4,715. Now, we got skunked on a Saturday card with a top play on it, which is rare. But we've responded now with 4-0 Saturday and Monday. We have a four-pack today uh, with two four-unit picks and, three, and two three-unit picks. Now, what we've been doing in acquiring more money than units is is we've been taking short favorites and playing money lines and getting them in a big plus number. You know, we did it with St. Louis yesterday. Four units minus a run and a half against Baltimore. Plus 180. They won 6-3. That's how we're gaining these massive gains in dollars. You know, sometimes they, you know, it's a 5-4 game and you don't get it done. You know, we also took the Nats yesterday straight up as an underdog, plus 145. They blew them out, 12-4 to 4 or whatever it was. So we're dialed in. Doc Sports, free 60 bucks. Link in the description below or on the website. There's a tab that says free 60. Get a month's worth of baseball. Put the $60 against the, the month package and try us out for a month to make some money in basis. Uh, we're passing um, in the NBA, obviously, tonight. The player prop market, we've cached our last 
I believe, six cards in a row. Maybe five in a row. Don't quote me. I know it's at least five in a row. Plus 1,660 to the good. Just cherry picking single player props in the NBA in these playoff games. And we're nailing them. We've got another four unit player prop in this game tonight. Also, WNBA, four unit best bet tonight in the WNBA. Doc Sports, place to be. Thumbs up, subscribe. Have a great Tuesday.